Welcome to Rachel Scale Modeling. This is part 15 of AMT Star Trek Next Generation Enterprise D. Scale is 1 to 1400. In this part, I'm going to be doing the, the main assemble. So I'm putting on the saucer section, joining that up with the hull, and looking at the warp nacelles. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. The first job to do is to scrape away some of the paint from the contact points. Now I do this all the time, I don't just generally show it, but um, this is going to be such an important weld. Um, it's going to have to support the entire saucer section, and of course vice versa, the saucer section is going to have to support the hull. So it's vital that I get a clean contact. But before I do anything though, I have to uh, wire up and not connect the wires to each other. So first of all, I'm just placing on a, a sheath before I connect these two wires. Now the sheath will be shrunk down once these wires are connected. But first of all, I'm taking the two ends and just twisting them together. Remembering to keep positive to positive, neutral to neutral. So I've loosely connected them. I'm just checking to make sure everything is lighting up. Um, that's obviously important. Uh, at this stage, if it's gone wrong, um, it's a real nightmare to fit, fix. But as you can see there, the hull's lit up, and as well as the saucer section. So now that I'm happy that everything's lit up, it's time to solder them in place. And this just takes a small bead of soldering along each joint. I do have to be very careful here that not, nothing uh, drops from the, the solder onto the model itself or inside. Uh, if it drops onto the model, the most of what generally happens is I'll ru ruin the stick. Um, but sometimes it's better just to put a bit of cloth in between uh, to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, it's better to be safe from solid. So that's what I'm doing here, just to, to protect the plastic as I'm shrinking the sheaths down to isolate the bare wire. And because I made a new solid connection, it's time to light test once more. Um, as I said in the past, I always light test each time I do something new to the wires uh, just to make sure everything works and if it doesn't work I can backtrack it to the point where it did work. So now I'm applying the cement to the joint. Now this is just normal uh, cement that I'm using here but I'm putting a good lot on uh, to create the weld. Now to join the two it's quite tricky. I've got to guide these wires in so they're not interfering with anything. Just gently placing them in and uh, marrying up the two. Now the um, connection points themselves are quite large and um, they do uh, fit well together on the dry fit but because of the nature of this and size of it you're not really going to get to see it. I'm trying to get it in a way that the camera will pick it up but as you can see it's quite difficult and that's mostly to the sides. And because this is an awkward shape I'm going to have to hold it in position. I can clamp it up because I haven't got a clamp of fit basically, so I'm not going to have to hold it until it sets. I only really had to hold it for about five minutes until the bond started happening before I, um, I was able to rest it so that it didn't come apart. And there, there goes my light test to make sure everything is still working now the saucer section is bonded. I do have a little bit of a light bleed, but that's going to be easily sorted out with a, a bit of filler as well as the joint there. Just a little bit of filler along the joint just to make um, sure all the light, light blades are taken care of. And I'm using micro crystal clear here to fill up the gap where the um, clear part is. This just uh, allows it to adhere without harming the, the work around the uh, area. So I'm not going to be harming the decals or paintwork. This dries completely clear and I can paint over it if I need to. For the sides, um, you can see I put a little bit of masking tape down just to protect the decals and I'm using plastic putty here uh, to fill in the tiny little gaps. It's more like a, just a hairline uh, fracture than uh, a gap really. So just a little bit of the uh, filler, then wiping it off with a uh, moist cloth and that will adhere to the um, gap and as I said the tape helps uh, the um, protects the, the surface from any excess filler. Moving on to the nacelles now I'm using a bit of plastic card here 
just to block off the part of the buzzer section uh, before it goes into the main nacelle. That's because I don't want any blue light bleeding into the red section of the buzzard. And all I'm doing is just making a little template plate. It's um, a, a, a half circle really, uh, just cut to shape and then place inside. And it's just made out of a plastic card. Uh, I've cut a little groove um, at the bottom just to accommodate the wires for the lights. And it's just secured on with a little bit of glue. I'm also putting a little bit of filler in the bottom to make sure no light comes through. So now I'm attaching the bottom cells. So first of all, I'm taking the two wires that run up from the strut into the hole that I made previously into the nacelle. And then once that's in, I'm just going to check for fit before cementing it into place. Like the softer section, I'm putting a, quite a heavy bit of bead of uh, cement on this because um, even though it's a nice tight fit, it's got to support uh, the the nacelle and of course there's extra weight in this nacelle, but nacelle because of the lights. So the bottom part goes on first obviously. Um, try not to get them mixed up. I've worked these, done these before where um, I've actually mixed up the nacelles. It seems like a rookie error but it does happen. So once the bottom part's in place I'm just going to wire up um, a, a test light so no solder or nothing and just contacting making contact with the two wires onto the um, light itself the diode and just going to put power to it to see whether this um, lights up and hopefully it will so the power supply um, it has gone on as you can see the lights gone on and I'm so happy about that because I've had so much trouble with these struts and getting the wire uh, to get, uh, receive the power um, I'm surprised they do work because I thought sod's lot knowing me they, they probably won't work but um, they did work and that's all good so now I can start building up the nacelle itself uh, first to go on is the um, side part the clear part which was painted blue um, near near the start of the um, process and there's a little lip on this it just sits on the framework quite easily enough you don't really need a lot of cement to attach this and once one side done I can then uh, attach the other side I put a little bit of crystal clear glue um, on the curved end where, where it meets at the back that's just uh, because I don't want and any uh, fogging or discoloration when, when these are together so the uh, white glue will do that the normal cement will weld and it can leave fogging or uh, a smudge mark the clear glue won't do that at all so next is to start thinking about connecting both the upper and lower part of the cell so like with the saucer section, I'm placing on a sheaf um, down the wires first of all. And once that's on, it's uh, time to connect both. So I'm just putting a little bit of power to it to make sure everything is still running okay. So as you can see there, I've, I've connected uh, both parts. Doesn't seem to be working, but that was just because I had a little short. And once I moved the connector, everything uh, in the end did light up so that was, was a relief so now that I know the power is going to it I can then um, make these uh, connections permanently so all I'm doing is connecting each wire together just twisting it together again this is a little bit tricky because there's not a lot of room to play about with you I wanted the wiring to be minimum amount to not interfere when I close this up. So there's not a lot of room and uh, the connection points have to be spot on because they're going to be bent at an angle and you don't want them to come become loose. So once the connection is made, again another light test. So you can see all the lights coming on. The one underneath the tape is coming on. I have checked that uh, as well. And then I can solder everything in place. 
And once the solder is done, I take the solder iron and pass it over the sheath uh, to shrink down and protect the and insulate the wires. And then once everything's in, it's time to place on the um, top part. Now, as you can see there, I've already placed on the buzzard. That just um, a little bit some air holes are on there. I, I forgot to record that bit. Um, but it's just simply placing it in its housing and that's that. Now, there is enough room just to get a couple of clamps on. Um, I put on these uh, clamps first of all, but um, you can use an F-clamp if you have one as well. Depends on much um, tension you, you need. But there was just enough room for me to get this clamped up. And once that's done, of course, I'll do the uh, second one as well. And this is where I'll end part 15. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds. If you subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to date, not only with this build, but all my other builds in the future as well, of course. Hit that like button. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. And of course, you can share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.